Uh, so the regional university network is our European university made up of an alliance of seven higher education institutes across Europe, as you can see from the map on the slide here. Next slide, please, Petra. Thank you. So RUNEU, our European University, is um, part of the European Universities Initiative. And the aim of the initiative is to bring together a new generation of creative Europeans able to cooperate across languages, borders and disciplines to address societal challenges and skill shortages faced in Europe. There are 41 such alliances now in the European University Initiative. And these represent more than 280 higher education institutions. The alliances are funded a mixture of Erasmus Plus and Horizon 2020 funding. So alliances can get up to 5 million euros from Erasmus Plus and 2 million euros from Horizon 2020 research and innovation funds. They represent 27 member states, as well as Iceland, Norway, Serbia and Turkey and the United Kingdom. Next slide, please. On the left hand side, you could see um, the gathering of delegations from the Run EU project when it was launched at the Portuguese Embassy in Brussels. So we have a mixture here of um, members from the higher education institutions that are in the Run EU Alliance and the Student Assembly and associate partners. On the right hand side, you can see um, the first project management committee meeting that was held in Tous in Limerick. Um, on the right hand side, sitting down seated, you can see Professor Rui Pedrosa, who is the coordinator of the Run EU project. And beside him is the co-coordinator, Professor Vincent Canan, who is the president of Tous. Next slide, please. So originally, there were eight higher education organ institutes in, um, in our alliance. Uh, and these were the Polytechnical de Luria from Portugal, so they are our coordinators. Um, Limerick Institute of Technology and Atlone Institute of Technology were two individual Irish partners, but since the 1st of October we have amalgamated and now we are the Technological University of the Shannon Midlands Midwest. Hama University of Applied Sciences, oh sorry Petra, uh, Hama University of Applied Sciences in Finland, Politecnico do Cabado e do Abe in Portugal, NHL Stenden, the University of Applied Sciences, Szczecny Istvan, our hosts today, and Vorarlberg University of Applied Sciences in Austria. So these make up the RUNEU Alliance. The seven partners represent 76,000 students across our European University. There's 8,000 staff, 400, or sorry, 4,550 of which are academic. There are 53 faculties and 97 research centres and groups. So I've already mentioned um, associated partners. The Run EU project is focused on working with regional partners for regional development in our, in our countries. So 34 associated partners um, that are collaborating with the project include 17 regional authorities, three chambers of commerce, five national authorities, three research centres, three national government organisations, one higher education institution, one international policy unit and one business. OK, next slide, please. The mission and vision of Run EU then is to foster excellence and innovation in higher education institutions through collaboration, ensuring the core principles and values of the EU. We aim to deliver future and advanced skills necessary for students and regional stakeholders to successfully meet the challenges of the future, to engage in societal transformation and promote active citizenship. 
we will improve national and international competitiveness of associated regions through collaboration and we strive to secure the sustainable economic, social, cultural and environmental progress of associated regions and stakeholders. Finally, we will address big societal challenges and become a true engine of regional development, leading in the creation of a new type of multinational interregional alliance known as the European Zone for Interregional Development or Easy ID. Next slide, please. In realizing our vision, then, we have developed a transnational alliance of higher education institutions and associated partners with the full programme designed to develop long-term structural cooperation. We have developed systematic mobility programmes for academic staff and students. And in doing this, we have established recognition of learning periods in Alliance universities. We have established and developed complementary curricula and collaborative European degrees and developed joint, re joint research development and innovation activities and programmes. Our unique new educational platforms are being applied to our European Mobility Innovation Centre, our Future and Advanced Skills Academies and our European Innovation Hubs, which drive our e Run EU Alliance. Next slide, please. If you look at the bottom of the screen here, you will see that there is a Run EU General Assembly. And the General Assembly acts as the governing body for our European University. It's made up of presidents and rectors, students' representatives, associated partner representatives and international experts. So by involving international experts, we're benchmarking against best practice across the EU. And again, I've already mentioned about our regional focus and wanting um, to engage with our regional partners to impact their development. So the associated partner representatives form a very important part of this General Assembly. The first meeting in person of the General Assembly it happened, um, took place uh, between the 1st and the 5th of November this year in Athlone and in Limerick. So TUS hosted it. So the associated partner advisory board and the student advisory board, we would consider these very important stakeholders for our project. And again, it's all about engagement and it's all about the learning experience for our students and impact for our regions. So they both sit on the steering committee for the project. If we look at the different work packages, then I've already said that um, the Institute Politecnico of Leria in Portugal, they are the coordinators. So they run and they lead co the coordination and management work package one. The other work packages then represent the pillars of the Run EU project. So work package two focuses on European innovation hubs, work package three on future and advanced skills academies, work package four on European mobility innovation. Work package five then focuses on the Run EU discovery program. That's our research work package. Work package six um, develops short advanced programs for our students. Work package seven, the collaborative European degrees work package that focuses on the development of joint and double degrees across our run European university. Work package eight then means that we engage, it's all about dissemination and sustainability. So how do we make sure that we are engaging with our stakeholders and how do we ensure that our, our project outcomes and our university outcomes have real impact where they are supposed to impact. The sustainability part then looks at how do we continue to deliver our university long past the Run EU project has finished. Next slide, please. So back to the three pillars of the project then, we have Future and Advanced Skills Academies, European Mobility Innovation Centre, and the European Innovation Hubs. If we take the Future and Advanced Skills Academies first, the target group for these, so they are students, young, um, middle-aged, elderly, full-time, part-time, flexible, and lifelong learners. So you can see there that the Future and Advanced Skills Academies focus on the continued professional development of our regional um, uh, inhabitants, I should say. So what are they involving? 
the FASAs then, they're involved with course development and delivery, innovative pedagogical approaches and assessment methodologies, and they operate across the regional university at both the central and institutional level, thus promoting integration. So Run EU then, our European university, identifies the importance of mobility and how students and staff can benefit from learning different culture and experiencing different educational institutions. So the European Mobility Innovation Centre embeds mobility at all levels across our European university. It increases the number of mobility activities, including physical, virtual or blended forms of mobility. We are developing a social innovation network for the promotion of multilingualism and multiculturalism. And finally, our European Mobility Innovation Centre looks at increasing the participation of underrepresented and disadvantaged groups. The final pillar then is our European Innovation Hubs. And these develop multinational research development and innovation units with shared infrastructure and teams. So these teams are orientated towards the United Nations Sustainable um, Development Goals and the, the pillars of Horizon Europe and meeting future challenges. So the three European innovation hubs that are currently being developed involve future industry and sustainable regional development, the bioeconomy and social innovation. So underneath these three pillars, um, I've included the targets for each one. Now I won't go through them in detail, but the targets, they're a mixture of tasks, uh, deliverables and milestones, and they are very ambitious. But we believe it's very important to measure what we do so we can make sure that we are having impact where we want to have impact. Next slide, please. Now, so the Future and Advanced Skills Academies, the European Innovation Hubs and the European Mobility Innovation Centre, they all sit in the interregional education zone that you can see there on the top um, left hand side. So these four blocks represent the cornerstones. So when we add that interregional education zone together with the interregional business and enterprise zone, the social and cultural zone and the regional government zone, collectively they create the European zone for interregional development. So this zone then provides collaborative self-help self opportunities to raise the potential of the collective population in terms of active citizenship, multiculturalism, societal transformation and social inclusion. Next slide, please. So I mentioned before that work package five of the Run EU project focuses on research and developing joint research and innovation projects across the European University. So an audit was carried out of the research skills and the infrastructure that existed across the different higher education institutions. And then once the audit was carried out, the different teams were arranged so that they, they mirrored um, uh, the Horizon Europe Pillar 2 clusters. And in the end, four or sorry, eight different clusters were identified. So creative art, design and materials thinking, food and biotechnology, tourism, the Internet of Things and cybersecurity, advanced manufacturing, climate change, circular economy, decarbonisation, educational and social sciences, and finally health and well-being. So they are now the eight research clusters that are in existence in our European university. And each one of these clusters now has its own targets to develop a mobility programme and to develop joint research and innovation projects across all of our um, Alliance members. Next slide, please. So now we move on to the Run EU Plus project. And the plus of Run EU Plus stands for Professional Research Programmes for Business and Society. Run EU Plus is a coordination and support action of Run EU and it's funded by the Horizon 2020 program under the Science with and for Society program. It began in October the 1st of this year. It is a 2 million euro project and it will last for three years. The aim of the Run EU Plus project 
is to develop a long term integrated research and innovation strategy across our European university and to develop a framework to deliver practice based masters and PhD programs for business and society. So I've already explained the different important pillars of our European university. So we have the development of joint and double degrees. We have our research and innovation clusters and we have our European innovation hubs. So the Run EU Plus project builds on those strong foundations already developed. And what we're doing in this project is really focusing on the interface where academia meets business and society. Next slide, please. The objectives then of the Run EU Plus project are first of all to identify strategic research areas um, and to focus on strengthening the academic business partnerships that exist in research and innovation in our European University. We will be appointing research and innovation ambassadors in each of our organisations and it will be their role to work at that interface and to be a bridge between our research clusters and our business and societal partners. We will deliver, sorry, first we have to develop and then we will deliver joint and collaborative practice based research degree programs at both masters and PhD level in association with regional industry, business and societal stakeholders. So the, again, the focus is on practice based programs where the student is working on and based in business and societal organisations. And um, throughout the day, you will be hearing examples and case studies of students and programme leaders who have designed such programmes and how they work and how we make sure that the student experience is maintained and is supported. The Run EU um, University then really appreciates human capital and we aim to strengthen the capacity of our researchers and supervisors. Uh, we're going to do this through developing a joint career researcher career framework program and roll it out across the European University. We will also develop a cloud of knowledge portal where our researchers and academic staff can share policies, training videos, results, publications to, to support themselves and each other throughout their research career. Next slide, please. We will also mainstream open science practices and skills, and we will do this by educating our researchers and academic supervisors in open science principles. And we aim to culture or sorry to, to nurture an open science culture across the consortium. We will reinforce cooperation and research and innovation activities between Alliance members and then outside to our regional partners. And finally, we will contribute to the development of the European research area hubs by fostering joint research and innovation activities across the Run EU Alliance. Next slide, please. So again, you'll see this diagram. It's the structure of the Run EU Plus project, and it is the same structure as the Run EU project. So it is divided up into different work packages. The, the coordinators of the Run EU Plus project are TUS, so Technological University of the Shannon Midlands Midwest. So we will be uh, leading the first work package there on coordination and management. The common research and innovation agenda, you will, you will be receiving a presentation later on from the work package leader of that work package, and that has been led by the Institute Politecnico of Leria in Portugal. Hamk University in Finland are work package leaders of our strengthening. Sorry, it's coming up on my screen. Uh, strengthening human capital. NHL Stenden in the Netherlands are leading uh, the work package on mainstreaming of open science practices. And TUS again are leading the work package that is involved in research with business and society. So the development of the professional practice based research degree programs. And we are also leading the dissemination, outreach and sustainability work package. Next slide, please. So the kickoff meeting of the Run EU Plus project 
occurred on the 4th of November 2021. So that was during the General Assembly meeting uh, that took place in Ireland. And you can see here there are representatives from each organisation across our European University at the meeting. Next slide, please. The deliverables then from the project. So I've covered all of these already. The first is a strategic research priority area so we have to a report on those and it's from that report then that we will know which masters and phd programs we need to develop um, in order to meet the future and advanced skills required by our business and societal partners a degree development roadmap so what type of masters and phd program will suit our business and society partners an accreditation action plan. How do we register our students? How do we review our programs? How do we examine our students? A researcher career development program, a cloud of knowledge portal, an open science skills training program, and then networks of research and innovation ambassadors, open science ambassadors, and gender and diversity ambassadors. And finally, our deliverable which we are meeting today, the first of them, is we will develop an annual international conference on applied research with business and society. So there are deliverables and they will be the outcomes at the end of the three years. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, thanks very much for the invitation to to talk to you all today. I think it's a it's a sign of the strength of our new European University, how many people are are participating uh, this morning and, and registered for this uh, event. So I've been asked to talk, I suppose, specifically about a, um, a, a case study, if you like, on, on a programme that we run or a series of programmes that we run with industry uh, here in, uh, in Limerick, uh, in Toos. Um, so just briefly, uh, so you got my introduction, so I'll, 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 you can move on to the next screen. Um, so I suppose what we're, I think, known for in, in as we used to be institutes of technology, both in Athlone and Limerick, um, and I hope we, we bring this uh, emphasis into our new university, is we're very applied in nature and we work very closely with our uh, associate partners, our industry stakeholders. Um, and over many, many years, uh, um, and I'm I'm 23 years in the uh, in in the organisation at, at this stage. Uh, over all of that time, we've worked very closely with uh, industry, and that collaboration has been. I, I always describe it as being a very holistic. So we we engage with them at all levels. Um, we don't just do research um, with with industry. We do apprenticeships. Um, so we're engaged from from the factory floor, um, from the machine operators. Uh, we, we we train um, precision engineering students um, at undergraduate level. We train mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, electronics, automation, um, and all of those are engaged with companies through work placements, summer placements, scholarships. Um, and then right up through uh, our master's programs. Um, and we're constantly sort of evolving and innovating in new programs. We're constantly asking our industry clusters, what are their skills needs? What are their shortages? What are their pain points? Uh, and we do our best to try and address those through the development of new programs. That might be short certificates that last a few days. It might be uh, government funding applications for industry supports. Um, as well, obviously, as, as research projects that, that we develop at a variety of TRL levels, but predominantly probably from TRL levels four, five and six, uh, where we pilot research directly with industry. Um, and we bring all of that together. So there's a list of a number of things there. And I suppose I'll just I'm going to talk specifically today about some of our initiatives in advanced manufacturing. Uh, two in particular, one is the postgraduate certificate in leadership in digitalization and manufacturing, and the other is a master's in engineering by research in digitalization and manufacturing. And just a final plug, uh, we have a manufacturing solutions conference in Limerick in June that you're all welcome to come and participate in, where we will have a, a, a two-day conference plus uh, a two-day industry exhibition with over 200 um, industry participants, and we hope a number of SAPs and a week-long uh, manufacturing week uh, based in Ireland in June. So more, more details on that later. Um, the next slide. So the first program I'm just going to talk about is a Certificate in Leadership. Uh, this is uh, 10 credits. Um, uh, um, uh, ECTS and um, it, it's a uh, 
kind of a short track program. It's run over 10 weeks. Um, it's uh, You can see that the fee is 1,300 euros, but it's government subvented. So the participant fee is about uh, is 130 euros, so it's 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 90 percent uh, funded for participants in industry. So we would have developed this with with uh, through a number of workshops with industry uh, who identified what they wanted, what the topics were. Um, we would have formulated a program, uh, had it accredited, and submitted it for national funding and been approved. I think in this case for about 80,000 euros in in support funding. Uh, next slide. Thanks. Um, the and so the target audience here, this is to help companies. Um, and, and the main uh, reason we developed it is to help companies on their journey towards digitalization of their manufacturing processes. You can see some of the initial participants here um, uh, in the first cohort. The, 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 the first series just finished last Thursday night. Um, uh, we had quite a number of people from, uh, obviously we had 16 participants from industry and they're just an example of the roles that they had. Uh, some uh, engineering directors, um, quality managers, uh, operations managers, uh, maintenance engineers, um, a variety of different companies represented from multinationals down to uh, SMEs. And we have another iteration of this running in uh, February for which we already have a waiting list. Um, next slide. Uh, so the, the the way the structure of that works again, we very much took industry needs into account. So it's run through a, a series of seminars. Um, so every week it's in the evening. It's from five to seven to suit uh, the the people at work. Um, it's online again, uh, not physically present. So we have people from right across Ireland. Um, and we did eight weeks of workshops where we primarily focused on bringing in guest speakers. So we we did some presentations explaining the topic and uh, and then had some guest speakers from industry, either from uh, technology or solution providers or from other manufacturing sites who have already engaged in, in some of these initiatives. And the eight topics that were selected were originally from a group of about 15 topics. And again, industry decided which were the most important eight topics uh, to cover over the duration of the week of the of the weeks. And over the last uh, uh, eight weeks, uh, nine weeks, we, we've had over 16 CEOs from manufacturing companies actually present to the students um, on the program as guest lecturers. Um, so that's been very interesting and very, very positive uh, feedback. And last week, each of the participants themselves presented uh, a case study based on their uh, um, particular industrial context. And it's been very good breakout discussions uh, facilitated by a number of coaches. Uh, next slide. So there's two parts to the module uh, or to the certificate. One was the lectures and the second part was a coaching of the participants on a particular uh, digitalization case study in their factory or in their industry. Um, and we worked with them. So the, the program had a number of coaches participating. And I think these are what I try to draw together at the end is some of these strands are important. You know, the industry people need to be supported. Uh, we can't just offer an educational program and they rock into it and 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 are with one lecturer supporting a group of 20 or 30 participants. There, there, there has to be um, more dedicated supports for uh, industry-based programs. Um, so we cover a number of things with the students through the coaching and uh, and then they as I said, presented final uh, peer presentations to the others on the course and final report for assessment. OK, uh, next slide is just some examples there of digital maturity indices that we use to, to help them. So a couple of for anyone who's interested in this area, a couple of interesting things that I put together last week on the summary of the first iteration. Um, we, we were very impressed by the level of digitalization pilots that are actually happening and the amount of companies that are engaged, uh, but the maturity levels are still low. Lots of deployments of data, uh, robots and smart maintenance systems. Um, artificial intelligence uh, is, is being piloted. And interestingly, companies are hiring new roles, new job descriptions that haven't existed in the past, like a data engineer. Uh, they're hiring maths graduates um, and, and into different roles. Um, they're starting to do sustainability, so the green agenda is starting to come through to the companies, um, but there are areas that they're not happy to do, and that is moving data to the cloud, and they all have problems with cybersecurity. So in the next iteration of the course, we're going to reinforce the areas around cloud technologies and around cybersecurity. So the learning from the first iteration will be carried into the second one. Um, the next slide, please. 
Okay, and then the second program, um, which is very relevant, I think, to today's discussions, is uh, a master's by research, a master's of engineering that we run with industry. Um, uh, this is in its third intake. We have our third cohort uh, just starting. Those students are here in a boot camp in LIT uh, next week in, in Limerick. Um, uh, sorry, this week, uh, tomorrow, um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Um, this program arose from a collaboration with a large industry network, an industry cluster uh, called the Irish MedTech Association, um, and it was put out to a tender. Uh, process which which we were successful in winning. Um, the MedTech uh, Association represents about 250 um, uh, primarily multinational companies uh, with locations in Ireland, uh, but the program was available to all manufacturing sectors, not just to their members. Um, and it's strongly supported by what we call the IDEM industry cluster, which is part of our research institute, IDEM. Um, and we have a very good uh, growing network now, one year in duration, um, that, that is bringing our programs more to industry. And also through, and probably I think part of the, the reason we were successful in winning this is where we have a, a European, we have a digital innovation hub through a European initiative uh, that focuses on supporting companies in their digitalization uh, strategies. Uh, next slide. So, uh, as I said, it's a Master's of Engineering. Um, it's not a thought program. It's a research master's and it's supported by a number of specialist uh, technical modules. Um, it's uh, 90 credits on the ECTS. Um, it's industry funded, so 75% of the funding uh, comes from the industry participants themselves and 25% is co-funded by government through what's called the SkillsNet program in Ireland. Uh, the, I suppose the, the income to, 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 uh, to date is around 500,000 euros from the, uh, the, the three, you know, the, 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 the first two iterations of the program that have run and, and the current third one. It's what we call a practice based professional award for experienced employers, employees. So the, the candidates coming to the course have obviously a, a primary degree um, in a number of areas, in, in often cases in manufacturing, in, in uh, mechanical engineering, um, uh, maybe perhaps they're interested in the all aspects of the digitalization, but they don't come from that. So they're not electronic and automation engineers, uh, they're not IT specialists, they're coming from the other discipline areas who wish to convert into uh, expertise or into understanding the technical areas around uh, digitalization in, in manufacturing. And, you know, the, as we, we express it, our aim is to develop a digital champion uh, to operate within a manufacturing enterprise who can focus on the integration of systems, analysis of key data, and the demonstration of opportunities and added value for the business. And essentially, we break that out into the supporting modules and the dissertation uh, in, in how we assess their, their completion of that. But the key focus is they have to drive a benefit for their company. Uh, their enterprise has to see the advantage um, and has to progress in their maturity over the duration of the program. Uh, we deliver it uh, slightly asynchronously, um, so it's designed through a series of boot camps. There are two four-day boot camps in, in the academic year, and there are a couple of shorter workshops, which are just a Friday and Saturday. Um, so they are spaced out. The dates for, uh, for those are published very early on, and we do not change them. Even through COVID, we brought people on campus specifically with um, for for these boot camps, um, and we very much stick that. And then probably 30 or 40 percent of the material is covered online through tutorials or, or material made available through our Moodle virtual learning environment uh, and, and, and different mechanisms like that. Um, we haven't had site visits because obviously of sort of COVID, but we have had plenty guest lectures again who have come in from other industries to present to the, the students participating in the course. And we now have, as we've built up the years, we now have the nice thing of we have people who have graduated this year presenting to the students who are still currently in the program. And later this week on Friday, we will have the, the people in cohort two who are nearly finished presenting their case studies to the cohort that have just started um, uh, this term. Um, uh, all in all, uh, we have between the, the, the people finished and the people currently just starting, uh, there are 27 um, uh, participants uh, in the program and representing, I think, 25 different companies um, on, on the program. And next slide, please. 
techniques. Okay, so I won't go, I, I, I kind of skip off the detail, but you know, on campus time, 11 contact days per year, because these are the key questions industry asks us. What is the commitment required from the participants? Um, and we have there a learner estimate at approximately 50%, 15% of their working time commitment. Um, and is that some of that is delivered on Saturdays and there is an expectation that the work is also delivered in their own time outside of work. Um, so it bites into some of their work commitment um, and obviously the closer their dissertation or thesis aligns between the work and the academic requirements, the easier and the better it is for them and the, the, the more likely it is to be successful. And uh, we do look for a significant scale in the project that they're taking on with their company. OK, so there's, you can see there's a hierarchy here um, in the, the pillars, if you like, uh, are, are the six specialist modules. Each one is five ECTS credits, manufacturing automation, data analytics, cyber physical systems and IoT, digitalization of production and, and database systems. And then that's capped with an applied research project, which is a dissertation. They have posters they present, conference papers they present, and there is uh, the pos possibility of a Viva. Um, we have a presentation in Viva Voce uh, possible at the end of the, 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 the masters. Um, and we had the first nine graduates uh, in November uh, 2021 uh, from the program. Um, I think we had uh, seven conference papers published from that cohort uh, as well. And um, I think probably of equal importance is we've had two of the candidates who have transferred to PhD. So having initially started on the Masters of Engineering, they've gone through our transfer process directly to our PhD register and they will continue on. And obviously there are two industry based uh, PhDs, uh, one in digital twins and the other in AI and robotics. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, as I mentioned, we've 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 the three cohorts there. Um, another additionality is that the individual technical modules, we also offer them separately. So the Irish MedTech Association advertised them to their members and we individually register uh, participants on those. Um, I presented this a couple of weeks ago to the General Assembly. I think we're running two more core, two more modules since then. So there's probably 60 um, plus um, participants from industry. So they're separate to the master's students. And I suppose it's an additional income stream, um, but it shows the value of the master classes and the content and topics of those master classes were identified with uh, an industry workshops with an industry advisory board that we have for the program. And we review the content with those as, as the program is delivered. And I'd like to give a shout out. Uh, he's actually across the office from me at the moment here at uh, Frank Doyle um, in the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, who's the program coordinator for the uh, for the, the, the degree um, for the master's degree. So I'll give him a little hat tip uh, for, for his great work here. Um, the next slide, please. Um, so the audience, the participants for this, again, similar to the other program, it, it has really been impressive, uh, the experience and um, and expertise that has been attracted to the program. So we have people who are engineering directors, facilities directors, R&D director. We have one participant who already has a PhD in science um, and is doing the Masters of Engineering with us, um, manufacturing engineers and, and so on. Um, we've had some small businesses and startups, and so their business CEOs have, have joined the program. Um, and you can see the variety of companies here uh, in the main multinationals. And I suppose a, a challenge for us is how do we drive a program like this down to our manufacturing SMEs that we want to support through our IDM industry cluster. Um, uh, but we, you know, we, firstly we have, the program has to be successful and then it attracts more and more uh, participants. And next slide. Thank you. So of the first cohort, we've had some testimonials and I'll, I'll just leave those with you. Um, uh, but from the impacts and the impacts are very important to us and it's important we track through the research work to the actual benefits to industry and society um, as, as is expected with this call. Um, so just statements from their publications, dissertation or, or, or um, papers. Um, they've seen benefits in reducing costs in their products. They've had time savings, 12% for manufacturing and engineering technicians, 90% reduction in sampling and processing time, 34% reduction in scrap yield and scrap. 
37% uh, reduction in scrap and savings of 100,000 euros, 50% reduction in process time. So we've seen significant benefits and impacts gained by the participants in the program for their companies that, that are far in excess of the cost of, re of releasing them either time-wise or supporting them uh, to undertake the uh, research degree. Uh, next slide. So uh, really just finally some takeaways. Um, on, on what I suppose I see as being important uh, for this kind of an industry-based research degree. Um, very strong collaboration with the stakeholders obviously is necessary. The, the associate partners, the industry stakeholders. So we have an industry steering board. We have uh, a person nominated by the industry association that re liaises with us on, a, on almost a weekly basis. Um, we have a very strong uh, IDM industry cluster that is working with companies, identifying guest speakers, uh, putting together workshops, putting together uh, the supports around the program. Um, so I think that strong collaborative base is very, very important. Um, I think what helps add the value to the program is it is, based, it is very strongly uh, based in an active research institute. So we are constantly feeding back in from our research activities in the Research Institute. So whatever the latest initiatives are in AI or in robotics or in industrial automation, um, that's constantly feeding back into the students who are participating on the program. So I think they see the value all the time in that linkage with the, the research activities. Um, there is a dedicated program management coordination and pro promotion um, around the program. Now, that's enabled by the funding we won, which is, is, is great. So we have a program manager, we have um, administration that helps with the coordination of the, the participants um, a, a, a bit outside of our normal academic structures, if you like. OK, so there's some dedicated resources to the program. Um, there's we have a very good supervisory team. Uh, so the people who are doing the the one to one supervising, the the lead supervisors of the individual masters, um, some very good and experienced people have, are participating there. Um, this it's quite flexible. So we we moved during the pandemic. We moved from boot camps to online delivery, uh, back again to, um, and we were able to sort of work around and and change around uh, the delivery mechanisms because we have that bit of flexibility here, um, in part because it's a research degree rather than a taught research program that would have a little bit more constraints around it. Um, uh, the the processes have been quite effective in terms of accreditation, registration, and a, I think it's really important that there's a clear funding model. So who pays for what? What companies, the company's participation, the company's obligations, when and how uh, they pay, that's really, really important. Um, we, we, we think we don't have it currently in the Masters of Engineering, but we think an, an introductory or as kind of a screening module, a foundation module is very important. So now we have that in the, the certificate in leadership. Um, uh, I think we will see the first candidates coming from that into our next uh, cohort on the masters. Um, but I think if I was to start again, we would build that in fully into the, into the process. Um, and what I would really like to see in a program like this is maybe scholarships to promote strategic recruitment. So we can get people from SM, from multinationals who have deep pockets, but how do we get people from SMEs? How do we get a gender balance? How do we get diversity balance? And perhaps some of that has to be supported or enabled through scholarships or, or through supports. And the last slide, I think. So. That's me. I'm maybe a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, if there's any questions or anyone would like to come back on any of the the points that that I raised.